Kyle Shanahan was born in the shadow of his father. The father and son's duo's records echo one another. Each has been to a Super Bowl as an offensive coordinator and two as head coach of their own teams. The elder Shanahan won it all, calling plays for the 94 Niners and took home back-to-back -back titles with the Broncos at the end of the decade. The junior Shanahan has seen a different fate in the big game. He was the architect for the top offense of the 2016 season and the head coach of two dominant 49er teams in 2019 and 2023. In those three Super Bowls, Shanahan's teams held leads of 25, 10, and 10 points again. They lost all three games. In no uncertain terms, he and his teams have consistently done one thing in the most important situations. They've choked. This is the choking legacy of Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan was born in Minneapolis, while his father, Mike Shanahan, coached at the University of Minnesota. From a young age, Kyle was immersed in the world of football, following his father from one coaching position to another. In 1994, he attended Saratoga High School in California, while his father was the offensive coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers. The family's next move took them to Greenwood Village, Colorado, where Kyle finished his high school education at Cherry Creek High School as his father took the reins as head coach of the Denver Broncos. Shanahan's passion for football led him to accept a scholarship at Duke University, but he soon transferred to the University of Texas at Austin. Starting as a walk-on, he played wide receiver for the Longhorns, a team brimming with future NFL talent. Despite a modest college playing career, Kyle's real talent, like his old man, lay in his understanding of the game. After graduating in 2003, Shanahan's coaching career began with a graduate assistant position at UCLA under Carl Dorrell. His first major opportunity came in 2004 when he was hired as an assistant coach for offensive quality control by John Gruden with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Kyle quickly proved his worth and in 2006, he joined the Houston Texans as their wide receivers coach under Gary Kubiak, a former colleague of his father. At just 27, Shanahan became the youngest position coach in the NFL, a testament to his football acumen. His rise continued as he became the Texans quarterbacks coach and then their offensive coordinator, the youngest in the NFL. However, his career took a challenging turn when he joined his father at Washington in 2010. Despite the team's struggles and accusations of nepotism, Shanahan continued to prove himself. In 2012, a fine for confronting replacement officials during a loss only added to the controversy surrounding his tenure. The Shanahans were eventually fired in 2013 after a disappointing season, along with a haunting roster of coaching talent. Yeah, Commanders fan, your owner was an idiot. Undeterred, Shanahan took on the role of offensive coordinator for the Cleveland Browns in 2014 but resigned after a year due to disagreements with the head coach and front office. His next opportunity came with the Atlanta Falcons in 2015, and then things started to fall in place. In Kyle Shanahan's second season as the OC under Dan Quinn, the Atlanta Falcons offense soared to record heights. In his eighth year at the helm, Matt Ryan had a stellar year, earning his first and only MVP award as the team powered its way through the NFC to making a surprising Super Bowl appearance. The Falcons entered Super Bowl 51 as underdogs against the New England Patriots. However, the game took a dramatic turn in the second quarter when Atlanta surged to a 21-0 lead, spurred on by a Robert Alford pick six. By late in the third quarter, the Falcons were up by that infamous score, 28-3, seemingly on the brink of securing the championship, their first and team history. Yet, no lead felt entirely safe against the Tom Brady era Patriots. Blowing a 25 point lead, however, seemed almost unimaginable. So, what went wrong? While the defenses collapsed, allowing 25 points in the final 18 minutes of regulation and six minutes in overtime was a significant factor, it's more than fair to place a good deal of blame on the offense. 
Shanahan's offense. His aggressive play calling contributed to giving the Patriots a chance to tie the game. One sequence in particular stands out as a particularly regrettable decision. Late in the fourth quarter, with the Falcons at the Patriots' 22-yard line, Shanahan saw an opportunity to extend their lead to two possessions with a field goal. However, he opted to keep the pressure on, asking Matt Ryan to air it out for a touchdown and effectively end the game. Instead, Ryan was sacked for a 12-yard loss and an offensive holding penalty on the next play wiped out any chance for a field goal. Reflecting on this moment during an episode of the Ringer's Flying Coach podcast in 2021, Shanahan admitted, right then I was like, oh my God, why did I just try to end it? Had the Falcons run the ball on either of those plays, even without gaining much yardage, they would have had a shot at a decisive field goal. Instead, they were forced to punt, setting up New England's game time drive. And we all know what happened next. Despite the ending in Atlanta, Shanahan's ingenuity paid off when he was hired as the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers, signing a six-year deal. His first season was rocky, with the quarterback position unsettled and the team losing their first nine games. However, the first-time head coach's leadership began to shine as the 49ers ended the season with a five-game win streak following a mid-season trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. The following years saw ups and downs, including a devastating injury to Garoppolo in 2018, but Shanahan and GM John Lynch's vision and strategy bore fruit in the 2019 season, as the 49ers finished with a 13-3 record and advanced to the Super Bowl once again. Throughout much of Garoppolo's tenure with the San Francisco 49ers, Shanahan often appeared cautious, rarely exuding confidence in his quarterback. This conservative approach generally served the team well during the regular season, but in the pressure cooker of Super Bowl 54, it set the stage for heartbreak. The 49ers were in a promising position, albeit not as commanding as the Falcons' infamous lead three years earlier. With just under 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter, San Francisco intercepted Patrick Mahomes, holding a 10-point lead at 20-10. At that moment, victory seemed within their grasp. Shanahan was about to right his previous wrongs. However, rather than seizing the opportunity to extend their lead, the 49ers shifted into a clock management mode, focusing on running out the time instead of putting up more points on the board. Shanahan's cautious play calling, perhaps influenced by the painful lessons of Super Bowl 51, proved to be a double-edged sword. In a close enough game with plenty of time remaining, the strategy backfired. Limiting Garoppolo to short throws, Shanahan's approach became predictable. Steve Spagnuolo's defense quickly adapted, stifling the Niners' offense. The turning point wasn't just in the fourth quarter. Earlier, Shanahan's conservative mindset had already sown seeds of missed opportunities. As the first half drew to a close, the Niners showed little urgency until Garoppolo took a deep shot to George Kittle with 14 seconds left. The catch was negated by an offensive pass interference call, and with it, San Francisco's chances to score dwindled. Had Shanahan pushed his offense harder or managed the clock differently, they might have had at least secured a field goal before halftime. The pattern continued into the second half. Facing a fourth and two at the Chiefs' 24-yard line, Shanahan chose to kick a field goal instead of going for it. The conservative decision added three points but missed the chance to potentially put the game out of reach. As the final minutes ticked away, the 49ers' once promising lead evaporated. The Chiefs, led by the indomitable Patrick Mahomes, mounted a relentless comeback, eventually sealing a 31-20 victory. The narrative of the game became one of missed opportunities and conservative play calling, overshadowing Garoppolo's limitations and casting a long, inescapable shadow over Shanahan's coaching decisions. In 2020, he secured his future with a contract extension and navigated the team through a challenging season filled with injuries. The 2021 season marked a return to form, with the 49ers reaching the NFC Championship once again. In 2022, despite injuries to key players, the emergence of rookie quarterback Brock Purdy led the team to another NFC Championship appearance. 
And before the 2023 season, Shani signed another extension through 2027, leading the 49ers to a 12-5 record and another NFC West title. The season once again culminated in a trip to the Super Bowl, the third for Shanahan and second as a head coach. This time had to be different, right? Well, maybe it was for Shanahan, even if the result was the same. Kyle Shanahan found himself at the helm of a San Francisco offense that struggled to capitalize on opportunities in the biggest game of the 2023 season. Despite receiving two turnovers and often having favorable field positions, the team managed only 10 points through three quarters. Tony Romo criticized Shanahan for abandoning the ground game during a scoreless third quarter, while others noted that Chiefs coach Andy Reid would have opted to kick off in overtime unlike Shanahan. However, these critiques didn't fully capture the complexity of the situation. The 49ers' decision to pass the ball during two consecutive three and outs, while leading 10-3, stemmed largely from Kansas City disrupting their first down plays, and a crucial false start by a guard on second and 10, which likely nullified a planned run. Faced with second and 18 and third and 15, Shanahan's decisions to pass was not an abandonment of the ground game. Both passes came from formations designed to look like runs, but Chiefs defenders Chris Jones and Leo Chennault applied pressure, leading to a screen pass that lost eight yards and an incompletion. Shanahan's play designs later in those series aimed to exploit favorable matchups for 49er stars like George Kittle and Debo Samuel, but these resulted in incompletions. Despite targeting a rookie backup safety, and an older safety, respectively. On their third drive of the quarter, Christian McCaffrey was handed the ball on first down, only to be stopped for no gain by KC's Mike Pinnell, who overpowered all pro tackle Trent Williams. Once again, despite having a 10-point lead in the Super Bowl, it evaporated. And just like Super Bowl 51, the most crucial contest of the year went to overtime. The decision to receive the ball in OT instead of kicking off was also defensible. You want the ball? It's ready on a kick. San Francisco will receive first in overtime. Good luck, gentlemen. It allowed the 49ers' defense, which had worked hard at the end of the fourth quarter, to rest. However, this choice did give the Chiefs a clear objective when they finally got the ball. Either match the 49ers' field goal or win it. The 49ers had hoped to get the ball back, but a blocking error exploited by Jones forced them to settle for a field goal. Then Patrick Mahomes, with an 8-for-8 eight eight passing performance and 27 rushing yards, orchestrated a touchdown drive that sealed the game. Kyle's legacy so far has been written. Shanahan's critical misstep occurred late in the first half when he chose not to use his timeouts on defense. This decision likely cost his team a chance to extend their 10-3 lead before halftime. Additionally, the revelation that some 49ers players were unaware of the updated overtime rules reflected poorly on Shanahan's preparation. Despite this, the defense knew they had to stop the Chiefs winning drive, but failed to do so. Even with the Chiefs receiver, McCole Hardman, unaware that a touchdown would win the game, it didn't stop him from making the catch. Shanahan's decisions were scrutinized. And while some were defensible, they ultimately fell short in preventing another Super Bowl disappointment for both him and the 49ers. Shanahan was a loser for the third time, but he didn't choke like in previous trips to the Super Bowl. The Chiefs simply won it. Regardless, the game will add to his legacy, his canvas of choke artistry tinted by the accomplishments of his dad. And it won't end until he hoists a Lombardi.